Hi everyone, it's Erin from EB Mixed Media. Thanks for joining me here today. Um, today I'm going to be working in my most favorite journal, which is actually just a very cheapo notebook. I think I've done a video before working in this. Um, it was like a $5 notebook. It says Love Nicole. Um, that I picked up, I think at Michael's or maybe AC Moore. Um, and it is uh, a journal. I just, I don't know why I like to work in it so much, but I do. Um, the pages are super thin. It's graph paper. And I just glue several pages together in order to make them thicker. Um, kind of consider it my lucky journal because almost every page I do, I just end up loving. Um, let's hope that's the case today, right? So today, again, as I've been saying, I'm going through my stash. I'm trying to use up stuff that I have. And I have this tag, which I made as part of a class. Um, and I honestly can't remember. I feel like it was maybe part of the fodder school challenge. I don't remember. We made three of them. Um, it's got this cool echo print on the back. Um, and I was thinking I would make this a focal point, but now I'm thinking it's got this cool echo print on the back. So I don't think I want to glue it down to the page. So that just blew that idea out of the water. So, shoot. Well, maybe I'll make some kind of a pocket or a belly band or something so that I can take it out and journal with it. Dang. Hmm. I hate to waste that by gluing it down, but it's kind of coming up anyway. Uh, all right, let me think about it while we're working. So let's get started. Um, I've got a bunch of papers here that are very muted. Um, I have another one of these. Is it echo print? Eco print? Sorry. Uh, this was gifted to me along with that one in some happy mail. Um, this is also another page gifted to me. These other papers were made in fodder school. This is just some coffee dyed copy paper. And again, my dad's analytic, uh, analytical algebra, analytical geometry. <laughs> Um, textbook. Clearly, I haven't taken math in a while. Okay, so I also have some painted papers that are in the same family. I don't know if I'm going to use those. I got a stencil. Got some stamps over here off to the side. So, and I have some of this um, Tim Holtz paper that's kind of nice. Um, so maybe we'll do some of that. Oh, I like that actually. I'll put that on there for sure. Okay. All right, so let's get cracking. Um, start with this. I have nothing in mind. This book is so thick too. I don't know if my page is really wonky here and off kilter, but we'll work around it. All right, glue stick, paper. Let's just start sticking some stuff down. And we'll build up some layers. I'm not going to think about it too much about where I'm putting things. And we'll just get going here. Look at these. Aren't these fun? Oh. And I like this. This paper is so brittle. Oh. I want that. All right, let's see. That's some um, paper from Fodder School. One, um, it was Kelly's lesson, the last month of Fodder School, I think that was September. How about this? I 
And I want to get this. I think this is super cool. Oh. Do that. And then I just kind of like this one. It has just a little faint pink flavor to it. So I'll put that on. It also picks up that color. Mm, I'm going to do this with a glue stick. You can do it. It's probably a better idea actually to do it with matte medium. Now that I'm trying to do this with a glue stick. Okay. There. I think that's a good base layer and I think I'm going to do some gesso now. While that's still a little wet, I've got some instant coffee here. It's still even like hot. <laughs> I just made it out. I'm burning my hand. Okay. And I'm going to just put some of that down and let it mix in with the gesso. Oh, now I got gesso in my coffee. Whoops. That might be the only time I end up using this coffee. I think it could have been a little darker or Stronger, rather. That's okay. Yeah, it's not looking very dark. I guess because the gesso. Um, I'm going to mop some of this up because this paper is so thin. It can't handle a lot of water. Not too happy with that. It doesn't. I think I must not have put enough coffee in. It's just instant coffee, but maybe the gesso is just making it more light. But my second option is to use some of this quinacridone Nicolazo Gold, and I need my spray bottle. Of that color so much every time I do it it never ceases to amaze me how that's starting to look old and worn and you can take your paper towel and pick up some of that paint and move it around all right I like that so far let's see this is a uh, Venetian pink from um, sommelier and this is a thicker paint. Um, but it is a really pretty color. But it's very, very thick. And I just want a hint of it, that rose color. Mm, that looks pretty. That 
looks very pretty. Oh, I like that. Um, got a little more of that hot pink in the corner from some other project. Oh, I like that. That's really pretty. Okay, I'm going to dry this and I'll be back. Okay, this is dry. And the next thing I'd like to do is play off the numbers here and try to add some number stencils. But I'm going to do it with some of this Distress Ink. We'll see how it shows up. Um, this is Vintage Photo from Tim Holtz, and we'll see. Very faint, but it's pretty cool looking. I think I probably am about out of this. I've been using this tiny little container for a few years now, and I'm totally wrecking this thing. <laughs> May have to get another one of these. You're supposed to kind of, I think, go in a circle, but I'm doing that, and it's pulling the sponge thing off. But, ooh, that's so subtle. Can you see it? Oh, that looks cool. I like it. I like it. Okay, I like that a lot. I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Do you think about outlining it? Or some of the numbers anyway? Just to give them. Just to give them a little pop. All right, and then I've got this chain stamp, which I've used before, um, and I like it, mm, but I'm kind of, I don't know. This is walnut stain, so I'm wondering if that might work. Maybe the better way to do it is this way. It's just, ooh, yeah, that's cool. Try that. This is another cool little stamp that I think was just left over after I scraped to make a different stamp. So let's see. See how it just kind of leaves a kind of gritty mark. And I want to. It just makes it look a little grungy, I think. But I don't want a lot. It's just kind of a grungy effect. Which I think is sort of cool. Okay, I won't do too much more of that. All right, I'm kind of feeling like this is getting there. Um, I'm gonna do some splatters. Oh, 
I got splatters all over my face. <laughs> I just dipped that in a little bit of the coffee because I don't have any water here. Mm. That's cool. And to grunge it up a tiny bit more, I'm going to do some black as well. I didn't even use any of my painted papers on this. This is coming together really quickly. I'm kind of surprised. I like it. Oh. Okay, so those who've watched me for any length of time, either here or on Instagram, know I almost can't do a page without putting gold on it. So let's make our chains gold sparkle as if the light is hitting them. I love this effect. It's It also picks up the gold of the safety pin in our little uh, tag that is serving as our focal point. That's the word I was looking for was focal point. Okay, so the page is pretty much done, I guess. Um, I really like this card. I want to have it on the page somehow, but I kind of don't want to glue it down because I think it could be a nice journaling card. It's very pretty on the back with this eco print, this leaf. So I'm going to make a pocket with this cardstock and we'll show you how. So I'm going to fold it here. I'm not being particularly precise with this. But the reason I'm folding it is so you have a bit of a gusset because of the poofiness of this. If it were just a flat tag, it could slide in behind a piece of paper. But this um, poofy tag, you want to have a little bit of space with your pocket. And having that little gusset kind of gives you that option. And so fold it up this way. And then we're going to cut out the little square corners here where the folds are. Right on the fold lines. Right. And then if we want to get fancy, we can go at an angle there, an angle there. Let me think about this and an angle. Do I want to do an angle there? Normally, I would just fold it up that way. Yeah, we don't need an angle there. So, there's our little pocket. And see, those folds give it a little bit of a give it some space so that our card will fit in a little bit better. Okay. So now I want to make this antique up a little bit. So to do that again, I'm going to go back to my, this is walnut stain, distress stain. It's a little darker than what we used on the page. And I'm going to kind of tear this, or not tear it, but wrinkle it. Because then when I go to distress it, it'll the ink will like cling to those tears and make it look more rustic and cool. Ooh, I tore it a little bit. Okay. So I guess I'll glue this shut real quick before I do anything else. And I'm only going to glue it on the edges so that there's some breathing space, there's space in the pocket for the card. OK. 
Okay. And the other thing I want to do is I have my three, or my three hole, my Fisker Circle Punch. And I want to just punch a little uh, half circle or not even quite a half circle. I'm just eyeballing it to get it in the center. And that gives you a nice little scoop there. It makes it easier to pull things in and out of your pockets. Okay, now let's grunge this up. I think the dark walnut, is that what it's called? Walnut stain looks really cool on the craft paper and it, it just makes it look nice and old. So you wanna get the edges, you wanna really do the edges, the corners where things naturally over time would get worn. You give them more wear on the edges that people would be handling. You imagine over time people were handling this document. And then when you fold it, you can get on those folds and see how that leaves a cool crease. The crease picks up the ink and then you get a really nice aged effect on your paper. That's cool looking. Of course, my glue came undone. Okay. And I think let's glue it down this way. And I think I'll have to use some gel medium. I don't think glue stick's going to hold it. This is just golden soft gel medium. Before I do that, though, oh, I almost forgot. Just to keep up with our numbers theme here, I'm gonna use my little number stamp. And stamp a number on the side of our pocket. I don't know why exactly, but just cause it's cool. Okay, all right. The trick here is to not um, <laughs> glue it closed on the page. So I'm just gonna push it down. With my palette knife. Yeah, I think that'll work. And see how the gusset doing those folds gives you a lot of space in the envelope. Okay. Oh, but you know what? I don't think that's a good spot. Crap. <laughs> okay, that works. <laughs> All right, I feel like I want something here. And what I have is a, I was at like a rummage sale, I guess you'd call it, the other day. And um, I bought a bunch of slips. And I've been tearing up the fabric, making strips of ribbon. And then there's lace on the end. So um, I want to, I had a piece of lace that I cut off of this earlier. And just something like that. That's not what I want. I want this. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, I like this, but while I was digging around, I found a faux postage stamp that we made in fodder school, and I thought that would be cute to add here. So I'm going to get just a little bit more of this matte medium and put that on right there. And then just one last little. I'm going to add our little journaling card into the pocket and I think we're going to call it done. Um, I like how it turned out. It's a little more um, vintage than I do a lot of, but it is fun to do that and mix things up a bit. So that is my page for the day. Thanks for joining me. I hope to see you back here soon. You can find me in the interim on Instagram at EB Mixed Media. That's EB underscore Mixed Media. Thanks. Have a good night.